Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A community coming together today to address concerns and demand action on growing semi truck traffic and the foul odors that are impacting their quality of life. Thanks for joining us here at noon, everybody. I'm Jason Colthorpe. And I'm Kim DiGiulio in for Rhonda Walker. Well, tonight's town hall is open to all residents of Detroit's east side. Many in the community are pointing fingers at the several industrial, industrial sites in the area, and they want some safeguards or regulations put into place to help fix problems with air pollution. Our Nick Monticelli spoke to the group putting on tonight's town hall. I smell paint right now, and my eyes are burning. For years, air quality and air pollution have been a hot topic around the Stellantis Mack Avenue plant on the east side of Detroit. Tonight, there's a town hall meeting put on by the east side community network to hear from residents directly. The event itself is going to have some interactive activities where residents are going to be asked to kind of help us identify where the problem areas are with trucking and with air quality, both on the east side but also across the city, so some mapping and then also some, some brainstorming around what, what are the problems that semi-trucks are causing and then what are some solutions people want to see. The Stellantis plant isn't their only concern. It's other plants too and increased truck traffic. Part of that policy agenda has to do with semi-trucks and the impacts that they're having on our community, um, both through the Stellantis expansion itself, but also other distribution sites that have popped up since the expansion. Um, and the expansion itself limiting truck routes. The Eastside Community Network put together the Eastside Climate Action Coalition four years ago. Tonight's town hall will have city and state leaders, as well as reps from Eagle and the EPA. Our end goal is really that we're building community power and that we're seeing our survival as like collective, like we are trying to survive together. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, thanks, Nick. And here's the information for tonight's town hall. If you're interested in attending, it's happening from 6 until 8 p.m. at the Stoudemire Wellness Hub on Connor Street. You can find registration information at the website on the bottom of your screen or on ECN's Facebook page. All right, let's get a check of the forecast now on what's turned out to be a great day. But uh, good advice is seize the day right right now. It's certainly that certainly is good advice. Ashley, how long can we expect uh, this beautiful like blue skies what we're looking at right now to stick around? Well, you can see that that thin high cloud cover is starting to build in, and that is really what we can anticipate throughout the rest of the afternoon as clouds will build, but still some sun peeking through right now as we take a live look at downtown Detroit, gearing up for the NFL draft. So a great shot in the Campus Martius area there. 61 degrees in Detroit, 60 in Ann Arbor, 61 in Port Huron, Monroe at 60. So consistently low 60s across the board. Winds are on the lighter side, which was anticipated today. That will not be the case, though. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is wind start to pick up, but the cloud cover pushing in from the south. So our northern community, especially up into the Thumb region, clear skies, but the clouds will thicken up throughout the afternoon. You can see all the moisture down to our south, especially along the Ohio River. But let's talk about what's happening farther south. Flood warnings draping Louisiana into Mississippi. There's even a tornado warning right now, right in between New Orleans and Mobile, Alabama. So the severe threat will continue today down to the south. No severe weather on tap here. Mostly cloudy skies heading into the evening with a high of 66. But we will have our share of rain chances starting tomorrow, really just after midnight tonight, through the day Thursday, through the day Friday, little break Saturday, and then some Sunday, some rain chances return. So it's a soggy setup over the next few days. Temperatures do drop on Friday, which will be cooler, rebounding this weekend. And then we'll talk more about the rain on Sunday and how those chances go into next week in just a moment. All right, Ashley. Police in Oakland County looking for some answers today after a man walks into a convenience store with a gunshot wound and then collapsed. It happened around 1.30 this morning at a 7-Eleven at 13 Mile and Greenfield in Royal Oak. Police say the 30-year-old man drove a rental car to the store. Investigators are fairly confident at this point the man was shot in the area of 10 Mile and Greenfield. At last check, he was critical. New information regarding those high-end break-ins we've been hearing about all across Metro Detroit. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office is now confirming crews from Columbia have been in Oakland County. Last Friday at 11, we told you about the crews that broke into several homes and stole thousands of dollars worth of money and jewelry. Now, this has been going on for months. The sheriff says a federal, invest or a federal task force is now investigating. 
Also new at noon, take a look at this police video showing a chase involving a motorcyclist that spanned from Dearborn all the way to Farmington Hills. Dearborn police said they tried to stop the 26-year-old Dearborn man just before midnight after he did wheelies and donuts around one of their patrol cars. Police say the motorcyclist reached 100 miles per hour before running out of gas in Farmington Hills. The man was arrested and charges are pending against him. Cannot run the chopper. The WIC program, also, also, also known as food stamps, will soon include more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. New foods uh, rules expand food choices, including canned fish and lactose-free milk. Also, the monthly vouchers for produce will increase, which aims to improve overall nutrition. The changes will try to address nutrition gaps and promote healthier eating habits. Well, we are a little over two weeks away from the NFL draft and preparations. Well, they are well underway in downtown Detroit. Let's take a look at the countdown until the very first round begins on Thursday, April 25th at 8 p.m. The draft is expected to bring in hundreds of thousands of visitors. And so that means, of course, there's going to be increased security. Uh, police patrols will be put in place. And later today on Local 4, we're going to talk to Detroit Police De Department Chief James White about how they're preparing for the draft and what steps are being taken to keep everyone safe so it's an enjoyable experience for everyone. You can see that interview tonight on Local 4 News at 5 o'clock. Boeing is facing new allegations. The FAA investigating new claims by a longtime Boeing engineer. We go now to Blaine Alexander, who has more on whistleblower claims made against the company's 787 Dreamliner planes. Growing turbulence for one of the world's largest airplane manufacturers, Boeing, as the federal government has launched a new investigation into the company amid allegations about one of Boeing's airplanes. The FAA tells NBC News it's investigating new whistleblower claims made by a Boeing quality engineer about the 787 Dreamliner. The latest claims, first reported by the New York Times, come after a series of dangerous mishaps involving other Boeing planes in recent months. The whistleblower, Sam Salapour, says sections of the Dreamliner's fuselage are put together improperly and that after thousands of flights, it could break apart mid-air. In a letter to the FAA, his attorney writes, it is likely to cause premature fatigue and failure over time in two major airplane joints. He is uh, alleging that Boeing knowingly took a series of manufacturing shortcuts uh, in the construction of the 787. Boeing says it is fully confident in the plane, which has undergone intense stress testing, adding these claims about the structural integrity of the 787 are inaccurate and do not represent the comprehensive work Boeing has done to ensure the quality and long-term safety of the aircraft. This latest whistleblower worked at a Boeing plant in South Carolina, the same plant that employed another whistleblower, John Barnett, who was found dead last month with what appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The new Dreamliner allegations come as the company faces intense scrutiny after that mid-air blowout on a Boeing MAX 9 Alaska air flight earlier this year and two fatal MAX air crashes overseas in 2018 and 2019. Congress is planning hearings next week. Boeing is putting profits and production speed ahead of quality and safety. That was Blaine Alexander reporting. Boeing stock tumbled on Wall Street today after the news broke on the new whistleblower. Over the past six months, the company's share prices have fallen by nearly 10%.